Welcome, 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 everybody. This is going to be part of our formal introduction to StoryBrain. I have an incredible amount of things to share with you. Theories and discoveries and charts and equations and analysis. But to get to those things, we have to start here. We are going to tackle the single most important question. Why do we watch movies or read books or quite simply, why do we tell and like stories? I say this question is the most important question because it is the most important thing when you set out to do anything, if you want to do it well, is to identify the goal. When you turn on your GPS, you set your destination. When you take out a new board game, the instructions start with the object of the game. When a business begins, they start with a mission statement. You may think that creative activity doesn't necessarily have a goal, but that couldn't be further from the truth because creativity without a goal is just randomness. Similarly, what we want to do is identify the goal at the most bare bones and basic level, which will allow us to be the most creative because we won't be stuck to following any path that already exists. You see, if you think of your goal when you get in your car in the morning as taking a right turn at this street, getting on this highway, taking that exit and getting to the office, you will always go that way. But someone who identifies the more basic goal of just getting to work is free to find shorter routes or new ways of doing it that wouldn't enter your mind otherwise. Okay, so we want a bare bones explanation for why we follow stories. And by that, I mean something that fits what we get out of the activity the most directly. Meaning, the more it does whatever we define it to be, the more good it is. Okay, ready? Hope you're sitting down. We follow stories and movies and books to get emotions we enjoy but don't get enough of in everyday life. And that is it. Plain and simple. Now I understand that maybe that seems incomplete and you probably have examples in mind that seem not to fit. But I'll bet I can guess some of them. For instance, maybe you're thinking people don't watch movies just to feel good. They watch them for new ideas, for truth. Well, consider this. Those people, including you and me, are not actually watching those movies and books for those intellectual ideas. We are watching for the feeling of getting an idea that we think is good or true. That pleasure chemical that our brain gets from it, and not the actual truth of it. I can demonstrate with a single example. Creation myths. If you and I went back thousands of years and tried to tell some Hindu villagers, for example, that the universe came from a big bang and then expanded, they probably wouldn't care. And in fact, we know from history that many scientists were exiled or punished for trying to tell people these kinds of things. But the story that did spread among those same villagers was that the universe grew out of the god Vishnu's stomach. Is this true? Probably not. But the idea made sense to them because they were farmers and thus it felt right and it satisfied their curiosity and it spread. Similarly, if you released a movie that was two hours of real footage of people sleeping in bed, it would probably fail, right? But that would be a perfectly true movie. But that is a boring truth. It doesn't carry any good feelings. This will come into play repeatedly in the future, and we're going to expand on the idea. And I've got a few more introductory videos to do. Thanks.